Okay, everyone. So now for tip number two, protect your peace. <laughs> That's what I've entitled tip number two, protecting your peace. If you go down, everything else goes down. So it's important. Blooper. <laughs> If you go down, everything crumbles. It's important that you allocate time throughout the day whereby you're going to do your work. Depending on the nature of your work, you might want to break it up. So for example, whilst they're having lunch, I do my emails. Whilst they're outside in the garden, I make my calls. So I actually deal with weddings and events. My company is called Afween Events. I have a booking system for clients to call me within a time frame that I know I'll be free and I'll be available. My children are trained now, so they know when mummy's on a work call, quiet. Even if they do happen to be within earshot, they know to keep quiet during that time. But I have allocated time for doing bursts of work throughout the day so as they're having their lunch, um, outdoor time, play time, and then again in the evening. And I think it's important as well to communicate to your children when you need your space. This is mummy's time now. Mummy needs to get on with her work. I need you to give me space because I need to do X, Y, and Z. And I do find that as long as you make it clear to the children, okay, this is your time to go and play in the garden and I'm giving you X amount of time. I do not want you to come and disturb me during that time unless it's extremely important. You make sure they have their bottle of water, they've weed beforehand, so they're not in and out the house. They have to sort out any squabbles, any issues amongst themselves. Perhaps you allocate, okay, you're going to, why don't you play with this for today? Let's do some jigsaws. Let's you know, play with the blocks, what have you. How, how about you play with your dolls? And so you, you kind of make it feel like for them that you're giving them these great options of what to do but you're making it clear that you do this whilst I'm doing me it might not even be the case that you have to do work during that time Ooh. It might not even be the case that you have to do work during that time for um, work. It might be housework that you want to do. It might just be that's when you want to catch up with your calls, your messages, that it's okay to have space from the children because what you don't want is to become overwhelmed and stressed out and irritable and then you start snapping. Then the environment at home is hostile and it's unpleasant. That's what you don't want. If everybody is respecting boundaries and space and everyone's been given an opportunity to have their own boundaries and to have their space, it just creates a really healthy environment overall. And that leads me on to tip number three. Setting the right atmosphere. I spoke about the children learning how to give you your space to do what you need to do. That's really important that you teach them that and um, that they know that it's not all the time, mummy, mummy, mummy. They have to be taught that and they have to learn that. But it's also equally important, I find, that when you are teaching the children, when they're having the allocated time for learning, you are focused during that time and you are not distracted. What I do is I put my phone on silent. Depending on the nature of your job and your work, that may not be possible. It's two hours out of the day. Don't call me, don't message me. And if you do, I will call you back. And everyone that knows me personally knows that if you call me, you probably won't get me the first time. <laughs> you might not even get me the second time, but I will always call you back. And if you message me, I don't have to respond straight away. I actually have removed the alerts from my WhatsApp. I've removed the alerts from that. I check my phone when I want to, and I sit down and I respond when I choose to. I do think it's fair to the children if you put your phone aside and you focus and dedicate that time of learning to them. That when you're distracted and you're checking your phone and you're coming back to the work and you're checking your phone, it actually drags out the time and you're um, not as productive with the time because you're not focused. You walk away from those two hours knowing I have given them a good amount of learning time that hasn't been compromised. I don't feel guilty. I know that 
I've done my due diligence for the day. And so when I ask for my space later on, it's okay because do you know what? You've had enough of me during that time. Bedtime, you know, you have your cuddles, you, um, you know, you do your bedtime stories with them. We always have a Bible study that we do together. Bath time might be a fun time for you as well. Protect that time for them too. That's really important. Secondly, classical music. Wow. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of classical music. It's not something I play um, because I enjoy <laughs> um, this, the sound of it. It's not my thing. However, um, there is a lot of research out there that says that classical music actually really complements or it helps children's intellectual development. I'm not going to try and pretend that I'm an expert in all of it. I am not. But what I do find is that it does create a very calming atmosphere and I always therefore have classical music playing in the background. I just put it on YouTube on my computer, playing in the background whilst the children are learning. I just find a playlist on YouTube. And I do find that the calming atmosphere really does help. The third um, one I wanted to mention in terms of creating a good atmosphere is having an organized environment in which they learn. Now, we actually have a dedicated classroom playroom, which is this room. And I also have my office space in one corner of the room so I can be at work whilst also keeping an eye on them. Now, you might not have that space in your house or whatever your living arrangements are. You might have to just work with the dining table, for example, or you might have to purchase a table and have um, a, a section in the bedroom. Whatever it is that works for you and your living environment and your living space, do that, but have a protected space, have an area that's dedicated, you know, and it's kept clutter free and it's organized. And, um, you know, you have the clear boxes, you know, with things or trays or and, and what have you. Um, and things are just easily accessible that way when they're organized. And I also find that when you're not operating in an environment of clutter, it just makes it a lot easier for you to concentrate, for you to focus. I don't know about you, but I get really irritable when things around me are a mess. Create something beautiful out of that space, you know, um, get, make it an activity, for example, an art activity that you do, whereby you can put certain things up on the wall and, um, you know, they can really take ownership of that space and, and make, and it feels like it's theirs. So yeah, that was tip number two. Was it tip number two? <laughs> was it tip number two? Yeah, that was tip number two and that was tip number three. Hit! <laughs> <laughs>